we pray. I will do a new thing requires flexibility and discernment. The implication is that I must be sensitive. I must be like the Magi watching the stars with wisdom. And when I see an unusual movement, I must know that this is not usual. And I must go to find out what is there. Because sometimes the spectacular, the phenomenal may shroud itself in something so small and so unattractive. Who would believe that the savior of the world would be around a place that was not so desirable? Oasis. If God is doing a new thing, then you must sustain the intelligence to say, Lord, I open up my spirit. I don't know how you will do it. Your breakthrough can come in a traffic. A traffic. The 30 minutes inconvenience while you are complaining, the Holy Spirit says, finally, I have his attention. Watch the car that is close to you. And from your window, you will be seeing something. And suddenly you will see a writing on the wall and the Holy Spirit will connect dots. We must pray for discernment, the grace and the eyes that see. That's why he said, behold, the way I will do this new thing will require you beholding sensitivity. The Bible says, while the shepherds watch their flocks by night, it's easy to watch your flock by day. But by night requires sensitivity because you are struggling with sleep. If one of the animals runs away, you have to, you, you may meet beasts, but they, the Bible did not, they were watching. And then suddenly they saw the angels. Sensitivity. Some of the most spectacular seasons in my life, personally and in ministry, did not come in ways I would ever think if I were given the privilege of choosing the scenery that would lead to those breakthroughs I would not select how they came are we together mighty ministries have started from discussions in the parlor they were just talking about Nigeria from Nigeria it went to old revivals from old revivals they touched on a general and then from a general it went to a worship song and from a worship song everybody began to sense that this we've always prayed in this parlor but on this day it looks like we're not alone and those seven people praying two hours became five hours five hours became seven hours and that was the birthing of something that would later be a global ministry businesses have been battered at the desk of complaint that while you are complaining and standing and saying I don't like this why is this happening the Holy Spirit is not even concerned about what you're talking about he's so desperate to see you get to the future that sometimes your complaint of the now does not he knows the joy of the future will swallow up this frustration so he will not he will ignore it while you are complaining, suddenly the spirit of grace tells you, could this be one of the products and the services that you're going to come up with? Many people wrote songs from their frustrations. They began to cry themselves and listen to songs and suddenly melodies began to come in the spirit. And they came up with songs that have blessed them and blessed nations today. Behold, I do a new thing. Behold, I do a new thing. Behold, I do a new thing. The Holy Ghost will just speak to you by 2 a.m. and say, just walk around your house like a madman. And you get up in the morning and everybody's asking you, are you all right? You say, I'm fine. What are you doing? I honestly do not know. Just walk around. He doesn't have to talk. You are just discerning. And while you are walking, suddenly you have a solid encounter that becomes the beginning of a great destiny. My question to you is, do you have the flexibility? Do you have the unashamedness? And do you have the courage to be flexible? Because sometimes it takes courage. The thing about tradition is that it's not in isolation. It's usually in a group. 
And so it's difficult to break out of status quo when God is doing a new thing because sometimes you will owe too many people explanations and God will say, do you know what? No matter what you say, it cannot be understood. Therefore, keep quiet. It is dangerous to keep quiet when you can speak. It requires courage. How do you explain a woman who claims to be a virgin and all of a sudden you find out that her stomach is protruding? Joseph, what the heck is going on? Joseph says, I'm, I'm innocent. God knows. Rabbi, no, the rabbi said, no way. Mary, what happened? I met a ghost and I had a conversation with this ghost. He assured me he came from heaven. And he assured me it's not a demon spirit. Do you need to see a doctor? No. He told me that which is in me is of the Holy Ghost. Question. What if Mary gave birth to what was not Jesus? You are only happy because what she gave birth to was Jesus. Imagine that Mary kept claiming it was Jesus. And on giving birth, she gave birth to something else that was not Jesus. There will be another episode in this Bible that will be a lesson for us to learn. Do you not know it's risky to stand until things are birthed? Because many times you are the only one who understands what God is doing. It's difficult to bring people into your vista. They, they can't see. God is ministering to you right now as you are listening to me. Because we are obsessed with trying to be right. We are obsessed with trying to have a good name. Nobody loves controversy by default. Unfortunately, God calls that controversy being highly favored. You have to understand God's idea of favor. God tells a woman you are highly favored. And for the next nine months or thereabout, she's in a time of intense controversy. And God still calls it favor. So when you are praying for favor, I hope you know what you are praying for. Are we blessed? I sustain the flexibility, oh God. God can give you instructions that does not make sense. Tell you things to do. Hmm. I was touched when I came in, Pastor Nath, a dear lady who was saying she, we're talking about her. The one you said came from her country and just came and was planted here. Now, those kinds of things don't make sense. But it requires discernment and flexibility. I do not yet see the rain. I do not yet see the cloud. But I know, I know there will be increase. I know there will be harvest. Noah begins to build an ark of gopher wood, three stories, and they insulted him. Do you know how long Noah took? 120 years now let me tell you something 120 years of proposing the same thing even you honestly one day you will go back to god and say let the rain fall small even if it's for five minutes let, let it just be a token you know we we are obsessed we're a generation of guarantees give me a guarantee that i will succeed unfortunately faith is the name of that guarantee he says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. He calls it the evidence, the tangibility of the things not seen. I believe God. There is no man called into ministry, whether worship, word, or any dimension. Ask any great person. You did not have any guarantee anywhere. The only guarantee was the name of the Lord that he gave you and the mandate he gave you. Abraham, come out of your father's house to a land that I will show you. And Abraham started moving like a madman. You call him the father of nations. The Bible says, and if you are Abraham's seed, it says that if you are truly the children of Abraham, you will do the works of Abraham. Are we blessed? Yes. A time will come in your life, brothers and sisters, where you will not be able to explain everything around you. Learn to trust God and let your mind catch up later on. If you remain scientific all way, you will miss out on many things. Because many doors in our lives are time dependent. The time you will use to discuss and deliberate and call a committee to just look around is sometimes you have to say, if I perish, I perish. 
I do not know what it means to enter the king's inner chamber without his permission. I know one thing that it could cost me my life. But right now the urgency does not require wasting time. If I perish, I perish.